Welcome back to Step by Step through Mark's Gospel. Jesus is dead. And surely that's it. There can't be any more, can there? Well, get ready. The adventure is only just beginning. Today is the last step in our journey through Mark's Gospel. The section we're looking at is Mark chapter 15 and verse 42, through to chapter 16 and verse 20. As normal, there's a link to an online Bible in the video description. Just one thing to note, as you read through the passage, you may come across a comment between chapter 16 and verse 8 and chapter 16 and verse 9. It will say something like, some of the earliest manuscripts do not include chapter 16, verses 9 to 20. How should we process that? Well, the issue here is that we're not sure whether these verses belong to Mark's Gospel or not. And that's important to bear in mind. The Bible claims to be God's word, his message to us. That's a big claim, and it says these words have authority and accuracy. If these verses were added later and don't belong with Mark's Gospel, we need to know that and treat them differently. As we go through, I will mention some of the things that are said after chapter 16 and verse 9, but only those points that are clearly backed up in other parts of the Bible. Well, having dealt with that, let's get stuck in to these verses. Death can feel so final. In life, the doctors and medical staff will fight, but then death comes. It's declared and everyone puts down their tools. Reluctantly, the end is acknowledged. Nothing more can be done. In chapter 15 and verse 43, we're told that Joseph of Arimathea asked to bury Jesus' body. Joseph was one of the Jewish leaders. We don't know if he'd been at the trial and stayed quiet, or if he'd missed it and was playing catch-up. Whichever it was, he now plucks up the courage to give Jesus a decent burial. At first, Pilate was surprised at the speed of Jesus' death. In verse 44 we read, Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. Once he checked the facts, he released Jesus' body to Joseph to be buried. Now this is important information. Jesus really did die on the cross. It wasn't just assumed, it was verified. Taking the body, Joseph wraps it and places it in a tomb, probably a kind of cave that had been chiselled out in the rock. The tomb is then closed up and sealed with a heavy stone. The last thing Mark tells us at this point is, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. Don't be mistaken, this may seem like an aside in the narrative, but it isn't. Mark wants us to know that the women had seen where Jesus was buried. They knew the location of the tomb. The next day is the Sabbath, a day of rest, and any further action in burying Jesus would need to wait until Sunday morning. At the first opportunity, we're told, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. It's early, the sun hasn't yet risen, and they set off for the tomb. Imagine what's going through their minds. Imagine how sad they would have been as they grieve for Jesus. Yet Mark focuses in on a much more pragmatic conversation. They asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? The tomb is closed and the stone is very heavy. They want to honour Jesus with a fitting burial, but to do that, they have to move the stone and they don't know how. How many ideas do they have? Who's the engineer among them with the solution? It would be interesting to know, wouldn't it? But all that is soon forgotten. As they approach the tomb, the stone has been moved already. And all they see is the entrance open in front of them. Getting closer, they step inside and gasp. Mark tells us in verse 5, As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Not what they expected. Where's Jesus? Where's his body? The young man, the other Gospels tell us this is an angel. He tells them, Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Jesus is missing. 
Where is he? The answer the Bible gives is this. Jesus is risen from the dead. They aren't at the wrong tomb. Remember, they saw where he was buried. Jesus has not merely woken up from asleep and got himself out. Remember, Jesus was dead. He's not here because he's risen from the dead. In verse 8, Mark tells us that the women were astonished and confused. They didn't expect this. I mean, would you? Mary Magdalene then goes back to the other disciples and tells them that Jesus is alive. How do you think they took the news? Well, they don't believe her either. Again, no surprise. Yet at the end of Mark's gospel, the scepticism has been replaced with faith and the disciples who once doubted are now telling people everywhere about Jesus. And not just his life or his teaching, not just his death and his sacrifice, their message is clear. Jesus is alive. And they really believe this. Over the next few decades, several of these disciples were killed for their faith in Jesus and their insistence to tell people about him. That's a big price to pay for a lie or something you're not really convinced about. So what happened? All four of the Gospels tell us. Jesus appeared to them. He showed them that he was alive. He showed them that his body was real, not just the apparition of a ghost. He proved to them that he had been raised from the dead. What do you think about the resurrection of Jesus? Did it happen? That's a question I often ask myself and sometimes struggle with. Then I look at these disciples and the change that took place and I'm convinced. What do you think when you look at the evidence? But the question here is more than one of fact or fiction. The resurrection of Jesus has huge implications. You see, if Jesus died and that's it, then he's just a character from history. We can learn from his life and be amazed at what he did, but it's all about back then. If he's alive, then he's real today. He's part of the present, not just the past. Jesus is God's king. If Jesus is alive, that's as true today as it was 2,000 years ago. Jesus has paid for sin and saves those who trust in him. If Jesus is alive, that's as true today as it was 2,000 years ago. Jesus calls people to follow him, to know him, to be his disciples. If Jesus is risen from the dead, that's as true today as it was 2,000 years ago. As we walk through the pages of Mark's Gospel, we see people challenged with this question, how will you respond to Jesus? And that's the question I want to leave you with as we get to the end of Mark's Gospel. How will you respond to Jesus? That's it for this episode and for this series of Step by Step through Mark's Gospel. If you want to know more or just want to get in touch, there is a contact form on our website you can use at whittlesebaptist.org.uk. Hopefully, see you sometime.